Hello, gorgeous humans. This is day two of EQ, the masterclass. When you're hopping on, say hello. How are you feeling from yesterday? I am so excited. I love these conversations and I haven't gotten through all the comments or the DMs, but I'm getting so much incredible feedback and breakthroughs. And I promise you, the more you listen to this, the more things are going to land and the more you're going to hear new things. So when you're hopping on, say hello. Let me make sure that you guys can hear me. Okay. I'm seeing people jump on. Hopefully I can see comments as well. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Today's a really, really powerful conversation. We are going to start talking about feminine energetics. We're going to talk about personal power and we're going to really deepen this concept of emotional intelligence. And there is a day three on Friday, so there will be Q&A opportunities. I'll probably bring in more content, another conversation um, based on your feedback as well. So I respond. So I'm going to put a thread, definitely put your questions there or anything that you want me to deepen. I'll come on. If there's nothing, I'll come with a riff and we'll also do our draw. So thank you, everybody who's been sharing and tagging. You are incredible. Ah, like so grateful for you guys. Okay. So who do we have live? Oh, hello, Donna. I'm so happy you're here. So excited. Uh, I have the most incredible conversation, guys. Hello, Rebecca. Just finishing my lunch break. Hope you're having an amazing day. I am having an incredible day. Hello, gorgeous Michelle watching from work. Hello, Kathy. Yes, I am so excited. Today is a big, big conversation. We got to talk about personal power. And so if you are live and hashtag replay, what was like your biggest takeaway? If you want to let me know what was the biggest breakthrough you had or an aha I'd love for you guys to share hashtag replay and let me know. Also, can you guys hear me? Well, everything's good. It's really stormy and rainy over here. So hopefully we have good internet. So there's obviously a lot more emotional intelligence. Like there's a lot of conversations we can have about triggers and our defense mechanism. And that's what goddess code is for. And it's not just all hard stuff. There's so much fun in that program, but there is a lot to emotional intelligence, but the key to everything when we're doing this work is just awareness, awareness of when we get triggered and how we react and how we respond, whether we you know, flight, whether we fight, whether we project on people, fawn, put our head in the sand, ice queen, silent treatment, just start to notice and notice where you're looking for validation. This will be a big conversation today for all you people pleasers. This is going to be a good one for you today. And just notice, start bringing awareness. And if you're a parent, gosh, this work is extraordinary. You're going to set your kids up for life. That's why I love this work because the ripple effects are incredible. So the more you apply this stuff, the more you listen, the more you're going to have shifts. And then what I'm hoping is when you're ready for this next level, like stepping into your full power, your all the emotional intelligence, doing the deep healing work, really understanding what it means to be a powerful woman, magnetism, all the things, goddess code. We're, we're going to be launching that at the end of the week. And then there's a new course that I'm launching. If that's something that you're interested in, all the things are coming. Hello, Sherry. I'm so happy you're here. So today we're going to start moving into power, personal power, energetics. Hello, Daria. We're going to talk about the identity, the kind of identity that makes people just want to move with us. And it's very much related to our emotional intelligence. And if you are a man watching this, you're going to take away so much from this, so much. So just because I'm saying feminine energetics, men still have feminine energetics. We both have masculine and feminine. But yes, I speak more to women, especially, you know, Goddess Code is exclusively for women, but it factor, um, there's another one, overflow is, well, men are welcome to that one. So that's incredible. I've been patiently waiting for goddess code. Oh, Michelle, this is going to be your favorite one. Michelle's an inner circle. And so she gets to do it all. But before goddess code, we're doing it factor. I just got the graphic. It's so good. I'm going to be like, I can't wait. I'm going to share it uh, next week, but we're going to launch goddess code first. Morning, Dr. Linda. I'm so happy that you're here. So this is applicable to anybody. I love goddess code. Thank you, Sherry. And Sherry's probably done it like four years, five years now. This is the seventh edition, which is pretty wild. So, okay. In life, in business, in manifestation, we really don't attract what we want. We attract who we are. We do not attract the things that we feel like we're deserving of or capable of. We truly attract who we are, like our energetic match. And I really want this to land today, what this actually means. 
So everything we desire, whether it's deep love, romance, success, you know, influence, powerful people coming into our business, doing business with us, um, health, money, powerful buyers, clients, having amazing partners and friends, like it has less to do with the things that you're doing and what you're saying, but who you are when you do it and who you are when you say it. So many people are constantly caught up in the how. And it's it's funny because people come in, in my world and they'll want to learn marketing and selling and all the things. And the program that they think that they don't need is Goddess Code. And it's the one that changes everything because all strategy works in the right energy. And I'm not talking about just business, but strategies and meeting the love of your life, all the things, right? So a lot of people, and I see this every single day, they get so caught up in the how. Like, how do I do it? How do I get the money? How do I manifest the partner? How do I get the power? How do I like manifest the visibility, the influence, the buyers, the clients? Like we get so caught up in like how, or what is it supposed to look like? Or what are we supposed to say? Like how, what's the strategy? How do I be confident? And the how is not the right question. It's not the right question. It's, it's who do I need to be is the actual right question. Who do I need to be to attract dot, 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 and all the things that you desire? Because if it was true that it was like success was based on a single metric, it was, if it was based just on doing a how, a strategy, then wouldn't we all apply the how and the strategy and get the same results? And we would all have self-actualized. That's not the case. It never is. This is why you'll see two people do the exact same thing, say the same thing, look the same way. And for one person, they're succeeding and the other person they're struggling. Why? Because it's not about the how. It's about who the person is on the inside, their energetic frequency, the, the match that they are to in the universe. You know, and like people say things like time is money. But if that was true, we'd all do the exact same amount of time and hours and get the same results. But that is not true. The how is not the correct question. And success and anything, whether it's love, romance, business, it's it's 80% of it, if not more, I think. It's it's energetics, it's psychology. And 20% of it is what you do and how it looks like and how you do it. You could have the same person do the same thing with another person and it works for one and it doesn't. It's because it's not what you do, it's who you are. And it's not what you say, it's who you are when you say it. And it's not what it looks like. Success in receiving is not based on a how and strategy. Hello, Angela. I'm so happy you're here. Nor is it based on what it looks like, because this is the other thing people get caught up. Oh, how do I look to attract the man? Or how am I supposed to look online? What's the branding that I need that attracts the powerful clients? Like, it's not about <laughs> what it looks like. It's about what it is, the frequency of true. It's, it's the inner game. There's a frequency to people who are super magnetic, who pull in power, and we get so caught up in the how and the strategy and what it needs to look like and what do I need to sound on, sound like versus like what it needs to be and who you need to become, who you really are, the frequency of truth, like magnetism, actual charisma. It's not about what you do or what it looks like or what you're saying. It's about who you are. And we're really going to understand this by the end of this call and probably add some stuff Friday. But even us, like, yes, you'll get attracted to someone the moment that you see them for a second, but it's like, we're really not attracted to what things look like. We're attracted to what they are, like the people, the energy, the vibe of things. And so energetics is so important. Even every strategy that I have in my business or anything that I do is an energetic strategy. It's the, it's the energetics that work, you know, like, and it was funny before I got here, I was riffing into my Voxer to a new one-on-one -on -one client. We were talking about sales. She has this new offer that she's launching today. And for those of you, if let me know if you're a coach or a mentor, a speaker, network marketer, or an activator of any kind, if that's you, pay attention to this because it's your energy that sells what more than the actual product or the program or the thing. It's it's your energy. It's you that sells the stuff. It's your energy that moves people, not the thing. It's you that moves people. It's you that expands people, activates people. You're the reason the things that you sell sells because of who you are, your energy. You are the catalyst for why people move. 
And so this is why I'm constantly saying, this is why I created the We Go First membership. It's like, we go first. Like we have to be activated in our full power, in our certainty, in our, like see our value, see our worth, in our magic, our passion, like in our conviction. Like that's why people move with you. And so why it's so important to really nail the energetics if you are like a coach, a mentor, speaker, activator, you know, like to move people's, you're the catalyst. You go first, like you're the catalyst for the entire mission and why people choose you over other people or besides the product, it's you, you're the catalyst. You know, like, do you really think that like Taylor Swift is over there masterminding strategies to get tickets sold? No, she's in the zone. She's fully in her magic. She's not a strategist. She's a business artist. It's her energy. She makes people buy like crazy. Regardless of what you think, she makes people move. She activates people. And coaches, mentors, speakers, network marketers, healers, like we're business artists. We're not business strategists. It's us. We're the catalyst. It's our energy that moves people. And this is why I also created the It Factor. That's going to be a course that's going to be the another prerequisite to goddess code. And for those of you who are really understand, like want to understand the energetics that makes people pull, like whether it's men, women, business opportunities, you're going to freaking love this mini course. We get a three-day, four-day mini course. If you're in the We Go First membership, it's $111. Um, if you're not, it's going to be 222 or 333, and then it will go up because it's going to be incredible. And if you're in goddess code, you get that as well. But it, there's an it factor. That's what this why it's called that. So there's an it factor. There's an it to these people. It's not the strategies, it's the who they are. So stop worrying about how or how it needs to look like or what you need to say and start focusing on who you are and what your energetic match is. And we're going to talk about that today. What makes us really powerful to powerful people. People want to do business with us. People want to give us opportunities, money, all the things. Like it's going to be amazing. So let's dive in. So it's not about what it looks like. It's not about what you're doing. It's about who you are that draws everything in. You know, and so in my business and in my life, I have different identities. <laughs> I have the mother goddess, I have the goddess, I have the, the CEO, I have the badass, like I have different archetypes and different identities. And the most important identity and the one that makes everything work is the goddess identity. She's the powerful one. She's the emotionally intelligent one. She's the one with the personal power. She's the one that's magnetic, who gives compassion. She's the one that makes the money, sex, power come. She can handle anything. And she's the one that co-creates with the universe and understands how to trust and surrender and co-create. And it's, it's her that makes the strategies work. The feminine energy is the goddess. And it's the most important identity we have as women and whatever you want to call it, queen, whatever, but you have an identity. It's your feminine energetic. It's like, oh, it's why we're doing everything we do. It's the passion. It's you, your sacral is lit up. So the thing is, is like, this is the most important identity they have as females. It's the magic. It's the thing that pulls in masculine energy, the goddess, the feminine energy. But women reject this identity so much because it's not convenient. It's not the doing energy. It's not the energy that gets things done. So it's not really convenient, especially in this really fast paced world that we live in. But it's the magic. Feminine energy is like the healing energy of the planet. It's the magic of the planet. It's like you lean back and everyone pulls towards you. Like the like masculine energy clients, masculine energy men are drawn to you. You know, and so as women, we have to have a balance of like the doing energy, but the feminine energy is so important. This is how we manifest even magic money because you can do, 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 do all day long. But how do you attract lots of power, lots of money, all the things? Feminine energetic is the magic of like on the planet. Like seriously, if you want to sell something, you put a very feminine energy woman. It's not about looks, just a feminine energy woman in her power who's activated her magnetism. Like you want to sell shampoo? have a woman wash her hair slowly that will sh like that will sell the shampoo you know so women we have this this it this this magnetism and and everything is attracted to it it's the trust it's the co-creating with the universe and so before i started doing feminine energy work or even understood the whole concept of emotional intelligence i'm a very like i've always been a very naturally masculine woman like definitely a badass to the core I was a hustler like I'm a first generation immigrant so you know I had to start working at a young age my parents weren't able to give us everything so I had to pay for everything that I wanted clothes you know going out paid for my university like I worked for it I worked for everything 
I knew how to hustle. My badass is strong, but I didn't know at all what the feminine energy thing was. Actually, I always thought feminine energy was the mother archetype. And so it actually blew my mind when I first st started studying this work that actually feminine energy is not mothering energy at all. <laughs> mothering energy is masculine energy. Mothers do, mothers protect, mothers provide. It's very masculine. And so we think that we learn feminine energy from our moms and, you know, our grandmas, you know, how to be a feminine goddess, but it's like, no, we did not. We learned how to be a mother, how to do, how to give. This is where the over giving comes from a lot, but you're thinking you're being a good woman, but really you're just being very masculine. The mother archetype is not, not feminine energy. And so when my relationship before Adam failed and I hit a, even a wall of my business, right. When I first started, I like, I was like, how are people like manifesting all this money and these clients and opportunities, like without hustling and working so many hours, like how come online you're always seeing receive 10 K in the bath or, you know, they're receiving so much money and all the things. And I'm like, they're not even working that much. What is it? How are they doing it? It's because they understand how to tap into feminine energy, this receiving energy that magnetizes and masculine energy clients, people who lean in like, and I didn't know how to do this at all. And you can only hustle so much and trade so much of your time. And so it's interesting when I started to incorporate like the feminine energy and understanding how to lean back and like even just the way I speak and how do I sell, like it's so related to this feminine energy, why people choose us. And it's like science, right? Like it's chemistry. And so when it comes to life and business, like you can't just do, do, do your whole life. And honestly, if it's all about the masculine stuff, success and failure, like what's the point? Like, like the, the goddess identity is so important. Like you've got to enjoy life in between things. Like we're, we're here to enjoy things too and achieve things, but you can't hustle and work like, you know what I mean? There's like, you want to become a billionaire, a multimillionaire. Like there's not that many hours that you can trade. You have to understand this art of magnetizing, the art of receiving. How do you attract the masculine men? Like you have to be in this feminine energy. And so when I learned this art, then I attracted Adam, who's a very masculine man. I attract clients who come to me because I don't practice outreach. I attract the, the opportunities, people who want to do business with me because of this feminine energy. And this is something I'm going to teach a lot about in the it factor as well. And I tracked magic and miracles and I understand I am co-creating because really, if you feel like you got to do everything yourself, then do it yourself. You can't even allow the universe to come in and help you. But feminine energy very much co-creates with the universe. The energetics is insane when we actually tap into this and what we can pull. So most women don't understand feminine energetics because we have been taught to be very motherly. This is why everyone, all the moms, even if you're not a mom, we're mothering everybody, mothering our sisters, our friends, our neighbors, we're over giving, we're people pleasing, we're doing a lot of performing, like it's the achieving. And it sucks because a lot of women think that the more they do, the more it makes them feel like they're being admired and loved. But the thing is like, we were born, we were loved just for who we were. But what happens, just like yesterday, we talked about how we get so trained not to be okay with our emotions and how to numb them out and be afraid of pain. The same thing happens with us females. And if you're a man too, this is going to totally land for you as well. But we, a lot of us think that the more we do, the more we achieve, the more we go over and beyond for people, put them first, we're good girls, we're good people, the more we're going to receive love. And we go from receiving love because we were loved, because we were born, to then constantly feeling like we have to do things in order to receive love and admiration. We get actually very, very addicted to validation and very, very addicted to performing. Us ladies, like little girls, like we actually get very taught to perform from a very, very young age. And we have to untangle this because this is one of the biggest things. We're going to talk so much about validation today, but it's one of the biggest distractors of our life. It's one of the biggest things that leaks our power and it leaks our magnetism. Every single one of us have been so conditioned to need validation. And it starts with our parents and our caregivers from a very young age, right? It starts with 
good job, you're walking, good, oh my gosh, you're feeding yourself, yes, you got an A plus today, oh my gosh, mommy's so proud of you, and then we're more vocal, right, oh my god, you're so incredible, you did your homework, yes, amazing, or we're doing super mom, Mario Doom was highly valid during my upbringing results and burnout, yep, yep, and it sucks because a lot of women think this is like love and admiration, and it's like we don't even know what the concept is, so there's a lot of us being trained to be addicted to validation. Little boys too, right? Like, did you clean your room? How did you do a track? Good, good, good. We're so proud of you. We're conditioned to constantly seek validation. And so for some of us, it was worse too, because it was like, if you didn't do the things that made your parents happy and achieved things, it's like, Santa's not coming. <laughs> you know, straight A's, you don't get to have a birthday celebration or a party this year. Like, you know, like we almost feel like even love is taken away from us if we don't achieve and make our parents proud and we don't be a good little girl, good little boy, right? And then there's like all this shame, right? Like from our parents because we didn't do what they wanted to do, you know? And so tell me if you're a mom in the comments and if you're not, but you are grandma, you know, and you have grandkids right now, you know, or you're a teacher and you notice this, but like, if you're a mom, Tell me in the comments that you're not more vocal when your kid does something great. Let's be honest. Like when your kid does something great, like they get an A plus or they squirt a goal, are you not more vocal? Like, yeah, good job, right? Like, oh my God, you scored, you nailed your project, you got an A plus. Like we are very much more vocal when our kids do. Yes, it's true. Of course, me too. And I still catch myself. I'm trying to be vocal about all things. <laughs> but this is the thing, guys. It's these little subconscious things that mold us. Just the fact that we're more vocal when our kids do good things is teaching them. I get more validation. I get a cookie today, right? Yes, I'm a mom and a grandmother. Yes, I'm very vocal, definitely, see? And so knowing that we do it, what do you think we got trained to do as well? So we are being conditioned. Don't be ashamed of yourself. We all do this. This is normal. Like, let's be all real. Like anything I talk about, guys, that triggers you, been there, done that. We get to move on. We know better, we do better. So, okay. So this is why. So we get conditioned from a young age to even seek the validation, to get the validation. And this is where people become overachievers and people pleasers. Like this is where it stems from. Hey, lovely. Sorry, logging in late. It's okay, Manisha. I'm so happy that you're here. My son plays drums and I do that, but I'm working on my awareness to value their own work with inspiration. It's like, but here's the thing too. So notice this. So, okay. So all of us moms, grom, grandmas, we all are aware that we are more vocal when our kids do good things, but you know that you love your kids just as much. Like we, we don't love them anymore. It's just that we're more vocal. So the subconscious conditioning for little children and for us as well is that like that equals more love and admiration. But you know, deep down, whether your kid gets an A or an F, like you still love your kid, right? But because we are more vocal, because our parents were more vocal, everybody was more vocal, your teachers, caregivers, hello, gorgeous, um, Ashley, um, then we're conditioned to think that we're going to seek validation, that we're good and we want to get applauded for. This is where this whole validation comes from. And people are so addicted. I, every time I go online on Facebook or Instagram, I'm like, look at me, look at me, like me. Like that's that's the vibe for most people. Um, just constantly seeking more validation because if you don't get it from your parents, you're going to go get it from somewhere else. So since we we're little, we we're very conditioned to seek validation, to seek the being the applauded for, to do good. Yay, you're talking. Yay, you're walking. You got an A. Like our parents more vo more vocal. You're more vocal. And so we grow up into adults thinking we need to become things. We need to do things. We need to achieve certain things in order to be applauded, in order to be validated, in order to feel love. Like this is where we start to think that the things we do equals love versus who we are. And this is why so many women are performing and trying to be the best and then missing the whole concept of collaboration. And then they feel like they don't belong. Like there's just so much that happens here. So the more we've been validated, the more we're addicted to it, the more we perform, we try to be a certain way. We try to be like the good girl, the nice girl, the overachiever, overgiver, because that's how we think we're loved. 
instead of knowing that we're loved for who we are as we've always been. But we think if we're applauded and admired and validated, it means love. And that's where we also get into a lot of trouble with the overgiving, the overdoing, the people pleasing, the chasing love through validation, through performing. Look at me. I'm a peacock. I'm perfect. Crazy. This is the old me. Yes. See, this is like awareness is incredible. And this is where we leak a lot of our power. I'm wondering why we're not so powerful because of all this. You know, like it's like, and constantly, like, when if we don't feel like we're being validated or applauded for it, we're, we're constantly have this nagging thought of like, what do I need to do? Or who, what do I need to do for someone to be seen, to be loved, to be validated? I'm phasing out. Um, that's the masculine energy. Like the goddess in you, the feminine energy, the divinity in you knows your love for who you are, not what you do or what you give. But we're so conditioned, especially women. The nicer you are, even if it's like not good for you, but you don't hurt people's feelings, like this is like you'll be loved and you'll be rewarded. And then we become people pleasers. And here's the thing about people pleasing that we're not really understanding what this is. We think that people pleasing is pleasing people. We think it means that we're good. We're good women. We're good girls. We're being nice. That's what we think it is, pleasing people. But pleasing people is the thing we do to avoid our own pain about other people not liking us. And it is... This is my trigger some people. People pleasing is one of the top forms of manipulation, especially by women. It looks nice. Looks nice, all the things you're overdoing and giving, but it's actually manipulation because you don't want to like sit with the people don't like me. So I'm going to tweak myself and be a different way, which is manipulating because you're being fake and not being really you. Yeah, it's when we're fake. You know, and so women are very much taught this. This is where the performance comes from, right? Because, hey, if we do good things and we act like good girls and we people please and we be exactly how people want us to be, we'll be rewarded and validated. Incredible explanation. Thank you. You're welcome. But it is a form of manipulation. It's it's just us avoiding the pain about people possibly not liking us. And this is leaking our power. We have to be so strong. And know like <laughs> most people won't like you on the planet, but you got to love you and the right people will love you. This is what we got to get to. But we're taught to perform as females, which is actually very manipulative and it's leaking our power. But the rule is for women, sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what good girls are made of. You got to be nice. You got to be good or nobody will like you and no one will be friends with you and you'll end up alone. You'll be seen as a biatch. Like, <laughs> and we actually grow up fearing being possibly bad, fearing rejection, fearing the pain. Like, like it's just like, we don't even want to speak up and stand in our truth because, oh my God, if I speak up, am I being a bad person and people won't like me? Light bulb moment. Yay! Kathy, I love light bulb moments, <laughs> right? So we get constant reinforcement and validation for being good and being nice from the moment we're born and we're taught to hold our emotions, right? Because also good girls don't really cry in front of people and you, you shouldn't be mad and you shouldn't speak your truth and you better not be outspoken. So you got to hold it all in, you know, you got to pretend, perform, perform, people pleasing, performing, right? So this is why a lot of women are performing, trying to be good, you know, so that they avoid not being liked and disappointing people because we want to be good. God forbid we're bad and stand up for ourselves. It's also very confusing. So then we want to do something good for ourselves. But then if it hurts somebody, we might disappoint them. We're, we're also, even if we do eventually stand up for ourselves, and we do something good for ourselves, even though it has to disappoint somebody, what happens? It's like we're flooded with guilt. <sighs> it's like we can't even like, it's like you're stuck in a hard place. You either constantly people please for people until you have left with nothing. Or even if you do so something for yourself, but it disappoints other people, you're full of shame and guilt. Like, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> and so we're seeing a lot of women grow up and adult women performing, being peacocks, willing to impress people for admiration, thinking it's love, but it's not. But we think if I get more likes and people reward me and validate me, I will feel more love when I do something. I will feel more love if I'm good and people pleasing. I'll do things to impress people. And it's like, we're missing the point. That's not love. 
Like there's a huge difference between love and admiration. There's a huge difference between people being proud of you and genuinely loving you for who you are. There's a difference between I feel love versus I am loved and I know it. Um, Kathy says I was raised to feel shame if I thought of my needs. It's so difficult to reprogram. Yes. And it leaks so much of our power. So good awareness coming in, which I'm happy you guys are starting to have breakthroughs here, but your love for who you are, like the goddess is love for who you are. You were born that way. Like people loved you. You snotted all over yourself as a baby. Like people still love you and thought you were cute and they still do love you, but we have it all tangled up that we got to do things and we got to perform and we got to people please. And we got to go, we got to like constantly be over giving. And then we get so addicted to validation addiction to feeling admired when we really just want to be loved for who we are and respected like you know and then we don't honor what we want to do we don't speak up for ourselves we, we start living a life for our parents caregivers so we continue to be validated we settle in jobs we we even date people that are that are like make our parents happy we become very submissive trying to be the good nice girl right or what else happens the opposite could happen we rebel right? When we're like, I'm not complying with my parents anymore because they just tell you your disappointment anyways. Even if you do the best, it still is not good enough for them, right? So then you're still disappointed. But then what do we do? Even if we rebel, even if you still can't get validation from your parents or still disappointing to them, we'll just seek it from somewhere else. If we don't get validated from our parents, we will seek it from somewhere else. Okay. I'll go get it from my boy. Okay. I'll get it from my boss, a friend. I'll go get it on social media and post all the things. I can get the likes and the comments. Okay, I'll get the validation from trying to be the coolest kid on the block. I'll go get the validation um, trying to be the funniest one. Like, if I can't get the validation from you, I'll go find it somewhere else. And that's not us being in our power Power is I am self-validated and I am okay and I love myself even if people disagree. And so this requires a lot of emotional intelligence because we've been very conditioned to need this, this validation, being rewarded, being the good girl. Because if we're adults and we're not able to validate ourselves, we're going to be constantly at the mercy of other people and we're not honoring ourselves. And we end up becoming very, not only we're manipulative, we become very swayed and I'm going to get into that because we also put ourselves at risk for people manipulating us, but we want to be free and untethered and we want to be a leader and we got to validate ourselves, speak our truth, follow our desires, wear what we want. Like we do not need to perform. That was the little girl you, like it's time to step into the growing woman, the goddess, whatever you want to call it, but the strong one inside of you, because you're incredible. Even if no one acknowledges you or claps for you. If you post and nobody saw it, you're still powerful. You don't need people's validations to make you. Because here's the thing, and I really believe in this, like when you validate yourself and you know that no one makes you, you don't need validation to create you, you create you, no one can break you. No one creates me. That means no one can break me. And that's the kind of personal power that we want to have. No one creates me. I'm self-validated, meaning also no one can break me. That's power. But here's the thing. When you need validation from other people, this is the other way that validation does not work for us. We start to use it as motivation for our own self-leadership. And that's not power. You will notice, unless someone validates me with likes on the internet or congrats or applauds that I'm doing well, well, then I don't feel motivated to do what I got to do. Well, like, what's the point? If I'm not validated, what's the point of doing this? Like, have you ever noticed you're trying to do something for your partner, like stepping in your goddess energy and you're being the sexy vixen and he doesn't notice you or acknowledge you or validate you? You're like, well, what's the point? Clearly doesn't make difference. Like, you see how it also is like tied into our motivation. It's like, ever notice you're posting on your social media, you're writing your best content, creating amazing graphics, but then nobody likes your stuff and comments and no one's validating you. So then you'll be like, what's the point? Ever noticed you're working really hard for your boss and you're like going the extra mile. You're like doing the thing, the best project, you're going over and beyond for your boss. And then there's no validation or acknowledgement. And you're like, what's the point? Like, what's the point? I did a bad, I did a big masterclass and no one bought. What's the point? Like, this need for validation makes you so not powerful and it makes you not the leader 
if you need people's validation and approval and likes and comments to do what you got to do to lead yourself, you're not the leader of your life. You're not the leader of your business. You're not the leader of your business. You're being led by other people. Like we go first and everything responds to us. Our addiction to validation leads us to need the motivation to lead ourselves. It leads to overgiving, settling, people pleasing. And we have to untangle this. This is a huge thing that's not allowing us to be in our power that calls in power in our natural magnetism we get so caught up in people liking us that we're not even who we are we're like the most adapted version of ourselves just to be liked by other people and people always think that charisma is like the most likable person in the room no the person is trying to be the most liked the least charismatic and least magnetic person on the planet it's like look at me like me like me everybody i'm gonna be any which way so that you like me you're the least powerful person powerful people are authentic it's like i like me and uh, and if you don't like me that's okay because i like me so we got to put down the people pleasing. We got to put down the validation because again, also it makes you technically someone who's manipulative. If you have to be the person that's liked by everybody in the room and you're tweaking yourself and adapting yourself, then you're the one that's being manipulative. And people are falling in love with you. Men are falling in love with women performing. And then it's like, you're not really who you were at the beginning. What went on there? Because you were performing instead of being who you are. And then you always think that you're never loved for who you are because you're constantly performing and being a peacock. It does not work, you know? And, you know, on the flip side, you know, if you're a people pleaser and you always need to be liked by people, you don't, you get very manipulated too. So you're not only being manipulative because you're not who you are, but you also get very swayed because when you're a people pleaser, you have a hard time saying no to things and no to people because you don't want to sit with the discomfort of disappointing people and you don't want to hurt people because again, we're nice girls and nice girls are not mean to people. So we get very easily swayed and manipulated into things that we do not want. So for example, have you ever bought something so true, Andalusa. Have you ever bought something from someone because you could not say no? You know, the lady at the kiosk trying to sell you the dead salt seed. And she's like, but if you buy it today, then you will get a discount. There's only one left. And she's like, like this manic, like you're worried about her. She's like chasing you down the mall. And you're like, okay, I'll buy the $100 of sea salt that you regret as soon as you get home. When have you ever bought something that you did not want, but you did not have the courage and the power and the emotional intelligence to say no? Yes, yes, we all have done. We have all bought the sea salt for hundred dollars from the lady at the kiosk. So this is a lack of emotional intelligence, and it's a lack of our own personal power because again. We're not able to sit with the discomfort in our body. We're not able to disappoint people because we don't want them to feel bad. Me, all of us, seriously, <laughs> okay? We have to become better at this. So this is like a woman thing. And I did a live about this like last week and I'm gonna bring it into here because a lot of people liked it. It's a little triggering. I might say some triggering things today, but I want you to step in your power and we need to hear it. And trust me, if I hit your emotions, it's a good thing. We're shifting, we're untangling, next level things are coming. So trust me. But one of the things that women do a lot is when we don't wanna buy something, especially around purchases, you know, we can go in a whole thing about how we won't even say no, and we'll just overgive, but like, let's talk about purchasing. So a lot of times when we don't want to say no, because we feel bad. And so we're not in our full power. Instead of saying no, we say yes. So we buy things and get sweet into things that we know we didn't want, but you being truthful, that's power. Holding the discomfort of disappointing someone and being in your power is power. And here's the thing, ladies, this is where we got to get stronger. I want to make you powerful. Like it is no one's business why you don't want to buy something. It's no one's business. You never, ever tell me, like you, because I'm never going to go in your DMs anyways, but even if you're asking for links or whatever, and then you decide not, don't even tell me why you don't need to buy. I don't, it's not on my business. Do you, you be in your power. It's, it's none of anybody's business when you don't want to buy something, but this is like a woman thing that we do. We're always like, I'm so sorry. I just like don't have the money. I have to talk to my dad. And like, I just, I'm so sorry. I just, I just can't hit. I'm so sorry. I don't have the money. Like even that is you not being your power. Even if you say no, but you're saying, I'm so sorry. I just can't, I don't have the money. That's also you not being in your power. That's not a powerful. No, thank you. It's not a line for me today. That's power. Not I'm so sorry. I just can't. I don't have the money. I'm so sorry. Like 
And seriously, the reason I did this live about this is because that's bad money juju. Okay. Like that's bad in your manifestation of money. Do not ever, please ever allow the sentence. I'm sorry. I can't afford it. And I don't have money. Exit your mouth. Like your throat chakra, especially if you're a defined throat chakra, like you are manifesting and calling in things that are not good for your money mindset, for your money wealth creation. You know, just because you want to make someone feel better because you don't want to tell the truth, don't declare something out into the universe that is not good for you. Like saying, I don't have money. I can't afford it. That, no. And even if that was true, you don't need to be declaring it out in the universe. We do not want that tangled up with our money and our creation powers. Okay. No, it is not aligned. No, thank you. Or no, that's a complete sentence. You don't need to explain yourself to anybody. And you get to be also just truthful. Like it's just not aligned. No, thank you. You could be a kind woman. I want you to be kind, but powerful. No, but don't declare things that you don't want. Hold the pressure. Learn to hold the pressure and discomfort. You know, you can hold pain in your body. You've done it your whole life. Now we got to become stronger with disappointing people, especially people that we love, but we don't need to give them an explanation. It's power to say, no, thank you. No, thank you. You don't need to tell anybody why you can't do something. Even if they ask you, hey, would you like to paint my fence? No, thank you. Powerful woman can handle the discomfort of disappointing people in order to do what's correct for us. We get to be kind women, but we're not the people pleasers. People walk all over us and manipulate us and sway us into anything. That is done. This is your permission. You're okay to disappoint people so you can set yourself free, but you don't need the permission. You get to just claim that. But no more explaining yourself. No more, I'm so sorry. Either you be honest or it's a no. No, thank you. Not aligned for me. It's no one's business anyways. This is how we become more empowered. And the more you do this in your life with little things and saying even to no to your husband, like you want to go work out and you don't want to sit around doing something with him today. No, I'm going to do something for myself and, and sit with that. Yes, needed this. I'm so happy. I, I really want to like tap into your power today. When you become emotionally intelligent and empowered, you become very difficult to manipulate and very difficult to be swayed. At first, you might feel a little guilt, but we'll work on that. Especially for those of you in goddess school, we're going to work on that. But you can sit with it. It too shall pass. You know, the more emotionally intelligent you are, the more powerful you are, the more it's difficult for people to manipulate you. And that, by the way, makes people very angry because have you not realized a lot of people make their living off people who are very manipulatable. I don't even know if that's a word, but people can't pressure you into anything. You know what you want. And if it's a no, it's a no and it's a complete sentence. And we're not going to feel shame and guilt about it because this is our life. This is my, like my decision. Buying is power too. And if I don't like this, and I don't want to do this. It's a no. And I can sit with that discomfort. Powerful women, I will tell you. Also, we give what we want. I don't just give people because they, I don't want to give people things just because they want it. I don't give the sex because someone that wants it. I give what I want, when I want, how I want. That's my power. That's what I want to be a role model for. That's what we need to be role modeling for our kids too, for our little ladies. Uh, me too, do this. Funny people who are used to getting what they want from you don't like you very much anymore. Exactly. And that's okay. And they will be on their way and better people will come into our lives or they'll do the work and come back. That's usually how it comes in my world. They get a little triggered, but then they come back. So people pleasing, trying to be the good girl, inability to say no, to disappoint people makes you like pressured into things, swayed into things. And seriously, if you want everybody to like you, you're the one that's being manipulative. That's not magnetism. Learning to say no has been so freeing. Yes, yes. Especially you, Donna, you're a projector. It's like, I, I only got this much energy and time, okay? <laughs> it's going to go to where I want it to go. That is power. Anytime you know someone doesn't like you and you want to change it, that's you manipulating. Anytime you try to compensate because someone is mad at you or you want someone to like you or you tweak something about you, you're being manipulative. And that's not real love. And, and people who try to fall in love with you for that, like that's not real either. We want to be so real, so real. You're laughing. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> I taught Adam so much because Adam's a projector too. And all my projector clients, I have so many of them. But it's like, you know, you're saying hell yeses to the things that light us up knows to everything else. Like no shitting, even for your projectors, no shitting. That's not the way, okay? 
So we want to be loved for who we are. And so, you know, also if, if you're performing and overgiving and doing all that, people are not going to fall in love with you. And deep inside, then it's going to be hurt. Like it's going to be hard for you. And we don't really want to be loved by everybody anyways. Like we just want to be respected. That's really what it is, guys. We don't need the whole world to like us and love us, but we do desire respect. So we got to set ourselves free from needing to please people if we're going to be powerful because where we're going now is I want to really under teach you and get you to understand what this really means. Far, 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 make a wish. Power attracts power. If you're not in your full power, you cannot attract powerful people. If you're in business, powerful people want to do business with you, cannot be attracted to you unless you're in your power. So one thing is no more validation, no more people pleasing. We say no, we can hold discomfort. We're not pressured or manipulated into things. That's one piece of it. But I'm telling you, especially in relationships and especially in business, and I attract a lot of heart-led entrepreneurs, like this business is for you guys. Like it's my mission. I wake up every day thinking about it. I love it so much. Like it's not about the money. It's about the, the, the changing, the legacy. I'm lit up by this work. I love this work so much. And so I, I attract a lot of people similar to me heart-led entrepreneurs who want to make a difference, who want to be fulfilled, you know, they have this dharma. And so a lot of us heart-led entrepreneurs, like we have the heart, we have a hard time with the people pleasing thing because we want to be loved by everybody. And we don't want to offend everybody. We want to be good leaders. And because we want people to love us, what do we do? And you'll notice this in business and you'll notice this in relationships because you will do this in just relationships too. But when you want people to love you, what do you do? Especially at the beginning of a relationship or in your business, you overgive. You give people a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of your time. You take, you go over your calls, you, you go over in your DMs, like just so that people keep loving you, right? But this is what happens. The more you overgive, the more people expect it. And then what happens is eventually your life gets busy. And you can't give people the same amount of attention and energy. And guess what happens then? Then they throw it back at you and say, you never loved them in the first place and you abandoned them. Like, this is what happens, you know? So, and then also if they do something you don't like, then you want to like give them less attention and punish them. And then they feel even more abandoned. And it's like, you never loved me. And all their childhood traumas come up. And then it's a big, hot mess. I see this all the time. And I want people to feel bad. Yes. And, you know, and this is, again, our, our need to be liked, our need to be loved, right? And in business, like this bites us in the butt because the more you're going over and beyond for clients, for buyers, giving people extra attention, like you cannot grow your business. People will expect that from you. If you keep over giving in your business, people expect it. And then as soon as you take it away, because you get busy or you have new clients or a new cohort, it's like, you didn't love me and all the childhood drama and what wounds come up. And this happens exactly in the beginning of relationships. Have you ever had this happen to you? I remember I used to do this all the time. Is like before I did this work, I met Adam, but every relationship I had, I wanted the guy to love me and I wanted to be the one for him. So what did I do? It's like you overgive too much. You give too much of your attention, too much of your time, too much of your energy. And then later in the relationship, you want to start doing things on your own or you just want that balance. They expect it. They expect all of that time and energy. And then what happens? And it's like, then there's something wrong and something's broken or they feel abandoned. Like this is what starts to happen. This is why we train people. This is why I'm going to keep saying we go first. We train people. We train people. And we got to like soften this need for everybody to love us and to validate us. Like we're loved no matter what, whether you give someone 10 minutes of your day or five seconds, like we still like, we got to trust people too. And like, I trust without evidence. I trust, you know, without like people constantly having to call me. Like I just trust they love me and I love them. Like, you know, so we want to be powerful women. So power attracts power. And powerful women are, I give what I desire, not what people want. I give what I desire, not what people want. And I am capable of holding the pressure and the discomfort of people's disappointment in honoring myself because I respect myself and I respect my dreams and I respect my life. And I hope that you respect your life because really like what makes it in us is like not one-sided relationships. Like me and Adam always talk about this, like this reciprocation and relationships are not supposed to be the same, right? Like it's because you give someone something doesn't mean it has to be reciprocated, but 
relationship have to have an us, which is like, I feel good in a relationship, you feel good in a relationship. If, so if it's one side and every, one person's getting everything and the other person's getting less, that's why things break down. Same in business. You know, like we want this us feeling. And so we also need to stop like disrespecting ourselves by seeking validation. So let's talk about self-love for a second. Well, that's a big part of being a goddess and an empowered woman. And it's a big part of you being super magnetizing. But we're not taught, obviously, the tools and mindset to have incredible relationships with ourselves. You know, and I'm going to switch self-love to self-respect in this in this topic today. But listen to this. Like, honestly, isn't this kind of funny? Like, even if you have figured out to how to really love yourself, like really, and you have figured out how to have an incredible relationship with yourself and you really respect yourself. It's funny how the moment that happens and all of a sudden you're seen also as, oh, you're so self-absorbed, you're selfish. We often get judged for loving ourselves. It's like the whole love movement is like, love yourself, lady. And then you love yourself and you get, you're so full of yourself. You're so self-absorbed. You're so conceited. You're too proud. You're too much of this. You're too much of that. And the whole world is love yourself. The whole self movement is very confusing. It's like, you're telling me to love myself. And then I love myself. And now everybody tells me I'm annoying and bothering people and too much of this and too much of that and too proud and too absorbed. Like you can't win. <laughs> and our relationship with ourselves is the most important relationship that we have that we have to always work on because it like, it is real when you hear this, like real self-love is the key to all love. And you can't really love somebody if you don't know how to love yourself. And you can't receive love if you don't know how to give it to yourself. The whole self-love paradigm. You're so right, right? But God forbid you do it. And then now you're self-absorbed, right? So in the theme of goddess code, I like to talk about respect. Because it's like like self-love. Let's, let's bring it to like, I respect myself. That's like the biggest, truest act of self-love. And really, we don't need everybody's love. Like I said, we want people's respect. And so how this all ties together, I don't think we really truly need to be admired by everybody and like by everybody at the end of the day, like, like I said, it's just a respect thing. And so we want people to respect our boundaries. We want people to respect the way they speak to us. We want people to respect the way that we respect ourselves. And when you are the kind of woman who truly respects herself, it's, it's pretty mind blowing how fast your life can change. Like, how do you treat yourself on a daily basis when you are someone that respects yourself? How do you walk? How do you talk to yourself? How do you speak to other people? Because respect attracts respect. Instead of asking yourself, do I love myself? Like, let's change it to self-respect. Like, if I respected myself today, how would I act today? How do you treat yourself when you truly respect yourself? Because in order for us to attract respect from other people, we need to be like, it needs to be pouring out of us, oozing out of our soul, like out of our pores, how much we respect ourselves. Like it is clear the moment people look at us, our inner energy, that we are someone that respects ourselves. It oozes out of us. And the only way to attract respect is we have to respect ourselves. And so contemplate this, like, how do I treat myself when I respect myself? If I respected myself, would I cancel on myself with this gym session at four o'clock? If I respected myself, would I cancel this masterclass with Lena? If I respected myself, would I cancel this ability of doing a program with Alina to change my life? If I respected myself, would I cancel this launch? Would I cancel this goal? If I respected myself, would I cancel my dreams? If I respected myself, would I ever dishonor my word and cancel on myself? Like, how do you treat yourself when you ask yourself, do I respect myself? How do I treat my goals and dreams if I respected them and myself? Our lives can change so fast when we actually learn to respect ourselves. When you respect yourself, you raise your standards, how you speak to yourself, which means you raise your standards in how you speak to people. Because that's the thing, when people really respect themselves, they know how to respect other people. Because if you would never, ever talk horribly to yourself and scream and project, you would never like do that to somebody else. It's just not in you. So in order for us to attract respect from other people, it needs to be clear we respect ourselves. It needs to be seeping out of us. And you can't even ask somebody to respect you if you don't respect yourself, because that makes no sense. And here's the thing. When you're someone who actually respects yourself, the way you communicate, the way you take care of yourself, the way you honor your goals, your dreams, your business... People just never cross your boundaries. 
they just would never do that. They just know you are someone with high standards because respect attracts respect. And this is everything to do with money and business. And it's going to blow your socks off of how this all connects. Self-respect is everything to, is also the key to attracting the right people into our life. Self-respect. It all starts with us. Having high respect for yourself, how you treat yourself, how you honor your word, how you speak to you changes the kind of magnetism that you put out into the world. And when it comes to self-respect, when it comes to money, powerful people want to do business with you, powerful opportunities. This is so important because people don't pay people they don't respect. If you don't respect you, people can sense that and they don't pay you. And when people don't respect you, they certainly ain't going to honor their word, your contracts, your terms, your agreements, if they don't respect you. We don't break agreements with people that we actually truly respect. We just don't do that. Respect, power, business, money goes hand in hand with our own self-respect. It's pretty mind-blowing. People won't respect to pay for your business if they can tell you don't respect yourself. And when you are the kind of person, we're talking about energetic matches here, when on the inside, when you're the kind of person who always breaks your word to yourself and people can tell you just dis you disrespect yourself, they don't respect doing business with you because respect is power and power attracts power. Powerful people respect their word and they want to do business with people who respect their word. If you don't even honor your own word, how are they going to believe that you're going to be powerful in business? This is pure gold. I am so happy this is landing. Yes, I'm so excited. This is just like a tidbit of what's coming in It Factor because I know you're in the We Go First membership, Linda. Oh my God, it's gonna be amazing. But respect is power and power attracts power. Receiving and holding big money and money, what is money? Money is people in their power, right? Like it's not just the flies, I don't know where to your bank account. It's someone giving you money, giving you a bonus, giving you a discount, giving you the money to buy your, whatever it is that you're selling. It's your boss. It's like, it's people's power. And so power attracts power. So this is why when people like have, like think they have money issues, it's not about like your, your tactics and your strategies or your capabilities or what it needs to look like. It's like, who are you that's a match to powerful people? Are you a powerful person? Are you someone who honors your word or do you not honor your word? And then you sign up for things and you break your word and break your contracts. It's like, why would someone powerful want to do business with you? You're not safe. Like, when you don't honor your word to people and you sign up for things because you had a hard time saying no or it wasn't aligned or you just decided, you know why I don't like this person anymore, so I'm not going to pay them anymore. I'm going to break contracts. You don't respect yourself and then you don't respect your own word and you don't respect their business because you, if somebody you really respected, you wouldn't do that. Respect is I care about me and I care about you. Respect is I honor my word to me and I honor my word to you. That's power. Power attracts power. It's who you are that attracts everything. And so when I see people, things like, oh, I can't pay now because it's not aligned or I, or they lie and say things like, I don't have the money, but you did when you signed up because here's the other thing. And sometimes do things do happen. And I get that. And trust me, like I'm the most compassionate person, but it's like, at what point are we taking responsibility for our decisions, our buying decisions? Like power is also responsibility. If you want to be powerful and you want people to do business with you and you want clients to come in and big opportunities and you want influence and visibility, like people want to see you as powerful. That means I take radical responsibility for every decision that I make, even if it wasn't aligned because it was my decision. It's your decision. You, you have to be responsible. If we can't be responsible for the decisions we've made, then we're leaking our power all the time. We don't even take our power back. Power is responsibility, you know, and powerful people with money and opportunities want to do business with powerful people and powerful people are people who have radical responsibility for their decisions, their actions, their word. Like this is like conversations we need to start having as women too, you know, like how can you be a safe investment for someone to do business with when you don't honor your word and you don't honor wor your word with other people and you also don't take responsibility and you break terms? You, you don't respect yourself, your word, or other people's businesses. And that's where we become not a match to powerful people, even powerful partnerships. Like people want to commit to you when you're someone that can commit to yourself. Even in relationships, this is the thing. 
We don't honor our word, our terms. It's like we disrespect our word. We disrespect other people, you know, and then you're wondering why people don't want to just go along like the through the finish line with you. And you wonder why people don't want to commit with you and buy from you. And you wonder if you're not getting powerful positions. And, and you wonder also when you disrespect yourself, your word and other people's words, it's like people don't respect your boundaries. Like you got to also respect your buying power. This is why I say like, don't even do the whole pretending you're small. I'm so sorry, I can't. Like, yes, things happen and I have compassion. But a lot of times, like it's a lie. You knew what you signed up for. And it's like, let's take radical responsibility. I take, I made bad decisions and I take it out on chin. I take full responsibility for that. No one forced my credit card. It's like, <laughs> I take radical responsibility. And sometimes you got to take it on the chin. But guess what? When you do and you learn the lessons, you're powerful. Your power grows. Your magnetism grows. And then you continue to attract people who honor words with you. But don't pretend you're small. If it's not aligned, say no. And if you make a decision that was not aligned, take it on the chin. Let's take radical responsibility. Like, that's not you being in your power. Lying and playing small. Like, women are also taught this thing. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know right? Like, no, let's stop doing that. Don't say yes to offers if you know that you can't hold someone's disappointment and then, or you want to back out. Know your limits. Know if you're scared of responsibility. It's okay. This is why in my business too, I have different tiers, right? Like if you're not ready to commit for a mastermind, private coaching or inner circle, that's for a whole year, like start with something like pay as you go. And we go for some membership, small, something small. Your word is your standard. Yeah. And this, like, it, it applies to everything, guys. Like, behind closed doors, who are you? How do you speak to you? How do you respect yourself? And do you honor your own word? Do you honor your own word to other people? Because that's why powerful people are not attracted to you. And powerful people come with money and influence and all kinds of incredible things. You got to be able to say no. And if you made a mistake, own your buying power. And I take it on the chin. I take radical responsibility because you continue to leak your power, leak your power. The people take advantage of you later on anyways. Everything comes full circle always. We're an energetic match. You continue to be someone that dishonors your word. You will continue to attract people who dishonor their word. And then you're like, well, I always attract these people. Same with overgivers. Why do I always attract energy vampires, right? It's like you overgive, overgive. You're a sucker for people who want to take, take, take. That's how it is. We attract our energetic match. Hold your power. Say, no, this isn't a line for me. That's power. Be truthful. Power tracks power. If you want powerful people to pay you, respect your business, respect your agreements, respect your terms, be an energetic match to that. We don't track what we want. We don't track what it looks like or how we say we track who we are. We go first. I respect my standards, my boundaries. I respect my word. I respect my terms, the contracts I sign. I respect my dreams and my goals. And I am an energetic match to people who respect my standards, my boundaries, my terms, and their word to me. Respect attracts respect. Power attracts power. In relationships, you want respectful partners who honor their word to you, who are loyal, who you can trust, who respect how they speak to you. Respect yourself because we teach everybody. We set the standard everything starts with us. Feminine energy is so powerful. It's so powerful. Like men might be the head, we're the neck. We lead everything. We're magical. That's why they're always trying to squash our power. How we treat ourselves is how we show people to treat ourselves. When you're someone who has high standards and self-respect, I promise you, no one will even dare cross your boundaries. They just know. And then you're only attract people who have high boundaries. So this is just like this something they would never do. We attract who we are. And the most magnetic women on the planet are the ones that are in their power, they're able to say no. They're able to hold discomfort. They respect themselves. They have boundaries, standards. They don't need validation, approval, or permission. They're expressed fully. They, they respect people, their word, their magnetic, and they're so safe to be around. And that comes with this whole emotional intelligence things like masculine energy. So clients that, you know, are coming to do the work, masculine buyers and men crave safety more than anything. Men desire safe women, and a safe woman is an emotionally intelligent woman. She doesn't punish, she doesn't shame, she doesn't guilt, she doesn't go out of her way to make people feel small, you know, she doesn't run away. And women desire trust. Even in business, like you want a powerful woman to do business with you, you need to be someone that honors your word. Integrity is what calls trust. Women want trust from men and their and their friends, like they want trust and respect. So honor your word, honor your commitments, honor their commitments, take responsibility. Bernie Lister says the vampire attraction. I have heard that comparison before. It makes total sense. Yeah. 
Givers, 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 attract takers, taker, takers. We want a balance. We want an us. We want the reciprocity. So it's not what you do or how you perform or are you trying to be likable that attracts the money, the power, the relationships, the sisterhood, all the things that you want. It's who you are. Are you fully in your power? Do you respect your word? Do you respect your dreams? Do you respect other people? Are you validated, self-validated? Like when I post, I'm lit up, I'm excited. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care. There's like three likes on it. I'm like, this is for me. And I know the right person is going to come across that is going to like feel that energy. I don't post for validation. The people that are posting for validation they need validation. It's very clear. Look at me, like me, look at me, like me. That's all you see online. That's not power. And who are you in your emotions? Because that's the other thing, like, Emotionally intelligent women are safe. This is why people like the mentors that you love, the the kind of women that you're drawn to are the safe ones. And safe women are emotionally intelligent. They don't silent treatment. They don't screen. They don't project on people. They take responsibility for their decisions, like their word. You know, like we're so powerful, ladies. Like we are walking, talking magic. We have the power to attract anything we want. The only thing that's in the way is like us leaking our power in these validation stuff, the overgiving stuff, the inability to say no, the inability to hold pressure in our body, the inability to, you know, be emotionally intelligent. Like it's just small little tweaks. This is why goddess code, if you're already being like, whoa, 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 like this is what we're going to do in every code. Every module is like a journey on itself in goddess code. This is like, whoa, whoa. And then the more you notice, you start shifting things, your magnetism, your power is going to go through the roof. And if goddess code is not something you can do, like it factor would be extraordinary too. I'm going to Teach something you be opposite of what you're learning online that makes you actually magnetic. And it's not just online, but in life, like that's for anybody too. But like, we are not punishing people like lacking emotional intelligence is why people run from us is why men run from us. There's a really cool analogy and around emotions that I love to share. I'm, so, I'm sure some of you guys have heard this before, but it's like the spill the coffee analogy. So it's like you're walking down the street and you're holding a cup of coffee and then someone bumps into you and causes it to spill. Some will say like, why did you spill the coffee? And you might say, because someone bumped me. That's the wrong answer because it's a trick. You spilled the coffee because coffee was in your cup. If you had tea in your cup, you would spill tea. Had there been water, you would have spilled water. Whatever was in your cup is what would have spilled out. And this analogy serves a powerful metaphor for like, when life bumps into you, because life will bump into you, what comes out of you? And this is like an emotional intelligence metaphor. Like what comes out of you when people bump into you? What are you brewing on the inside? Patience is going to come out. Is it understanding, compassion, humility? Or because you don't know emotional intelligence and you numb things out and you're constantly bottling things out and someone bumps you, is it impatience, rage, anger, bitterness, resentment, projections? This analogy serves a powerful metaphor because it's like we constantly blame outside circumstances for the reactions that come out of us. It's your fault I got angry. It's your fault I spilled it. It's like, listen, life provides you the cup, but you choose the continents inside. You choose what comes out. And so we want to become more self-aware, more emotionally intelligent. We want to start bringing awareness of how we react because magnetism, charisma, like that it factor, like the thing that pulls, the thing that people have, it has nothing to do with looks, the thing people have, it's like, it starts with who we be, not what we do. Magnetism, power, charisma, it's about who we be, not what we do. It's not what you say, it's who you are when you're saying it, you're powerful, you're convicted, you're in your power, like we're so powerful. But we haven't been on this journey of what it means to be a powerful, fully expressed woman, no one has taught us these important conversations about being a powerful, happy, magnetic woman that actually overflows into everything. Because when you start choosing you, everybody loves you because you have overflow. When you put yourself last, you're the one that everybody puts last and then you end up losing your mind. And everybody's like, oh my God, why are you losing your, why are you being a Karen? <laughs> Sorry for the Karens. Who you are when you say it. Like, like we are taught to be girls and then we're really taught to be mothers which choose, turns into overgivers, And then we're wondering why we don't feel empowered and magical in our life. Like 
this is how it goes. Like there is no like rite of passage for us women at all. Like it's like you're a little girl and you're being conditioned to like need the validation, be a good girl, don't be loud. It's like, this is how it goes for us. Thank you so much. This is how it goes. It's like, don't be outspoken. Don't say what you really want to say. Be a good girl. Don't be loud. And then it turns into you being a woman and people are like, why are you telling people how you really feel and what you want, girl? How did it go from, it's like, don't let people touch you. You, you know, call the police. Sex is bad. Don't touch yourself down there to like, you're not having sex. You're not more like orgasming. Oh my God, you better call a therapist. Like, how did it go from like us being told, be quiet, don't make people upset, you know, like, and then it's like your friend, why aren't you putting down boundaries, girl? You, you raise your standards. So I'm confused. Okay. Cause it went from like, be nice to like, lady, stop being a doormat. How did it go from like, apologize and say, sorry, even if they, if you don't mean it, make up and be nice to like people telling you later on, like, yo why are you letting people walk all over you lady like raise your bar i'm like i don't know i'm confused okay i was taught to be this way and like, like seriously this is why these conversations are so important like w when did we have these conversations your mom didn't have them you know your mom was just teaching you to be a mom and over give her people pleaser so it's like so it's like we're we're sent so many mixed messages. And so this is why, like, it's like we don't grow up on the inside. That's why the projections and the silent treatment and the overgiving and people pleasing or eventually we lose our shit because it's like we've had all these mixed things and then nobody had this conversation about what it means to step into being a powerful woman who respects herself, who has standards and boundaries, who knows sex is pleasure and should enjoy her pleasure between her legs, has emotional intelligence, speaks her truth, doesn't need validation, and doesn't punish or manipulate or perform, taught to be who she is. Like, we're not taught this stuff. This is why I created Goddess Code. And if you're not ready for Goddess's Code, It Factor will be so incredible for you. But we're not little girls anymore there is a version of you in there and she comes out and she wants to stop her feet and have a tantrum it's okay we're gonna learn how to navigate that part of us but we're not little nice girls anymore we are powerful magnetic sexy empowered growing capable women like that's what I want you to feel like every single day in your life and then this is the energy of like it's not about what you do it's who you are you just command power people know you have standards because you chose yourself and it's little things like holding the disappointment and saying no. We are definitely, yeah. So we are starting God's Code mid-October. First, It Factor is going to launch. It's going to be incredible. Um, if you do Goddess Code, you get the Art of Feminine Magnetism Overflow, which is like the art of receiving, learning how to receive. It's a two-hour code. You can buy it on your own. You can get it in the WeGo First membership. And you also get body code. So if you do Goddess Code, you get all of this. If Goddess Code is not something right for you, 888 is not the price for you. You can do a payment plan, but if it's still too much, like honestly, the We Go First membership is like the best thing I've created. It's $111. You pay as you go. You can cancel anytime. Immediately you'll get in there. You get money codes, body codes, the art of feminine magnetism, overflow. I just did collapsing time. So you understand that badass identity. Like it's got $11,000 worth of courses. And then you get, you can binge them and you can cancel or you can keep going with me. And I, my hope is you keep going with me because there's new programs that I'm creating. And so for instance, the it factor is going to start mid, it's going to start, I'm going to launch it next week and they'll start a week after it'd be like a three day, four day course. I'll go into a whole launch about it, but it's $111 or you pay on its own, which will be like two, two, two or three, two, three. I don't know. It's going to go up in price as well, but like we go first membership extraordinary. And if you're like ready for next level moves, like inner circle, then you get like all my live programs half off. Like it's like the best stuff ever. Like it's 4,444 for the year or it's 399 a month, but then you get, we go first everything in there. And then you get all the live programs and there's mastermind calls. Like, let's go, let's move. Like my goal is to move you. And I, and if I triggered you in any way, I just want you to know something about myself. I don't speak to people's lack. I don't speak to people like they're turkeys. I speak to your power. I don't speak to lack or insecurities. And I'm not going to tiptoe around these conversations because I know how much they changed my life. They changed my client's life and they would change your life and they would change your energetic signature on the planet. When you start tweaking little things that we've been talking about and I'll have more on Friday, 
you're changing your energetic signature in the universe. You're going to attract better, more respect, power. Like it's incredible start happening. People who respect you, honor you. Like I want everything you've ever wanted to come true. And I want you to look back on your life and be proud of the woman you are and what kind of role model you are. So I don't speak to lack. I speak to power. I don't speak to pain points. Like there's something wrong with you. A lot of women, I'm telling you what I've realized is they don't know their power on the planet because like a lot of things that you guys are like, whoa, I thought I should have known this by now. And we still don't. A lot of people don't know their power. And a lot of people take advantage of people and market to women who don't know their power. So they speak to their pain points and their fear and their lack and their insecurities and their validation. I don't believe in people's lack. This is the whole point of the coaching industry. I believe in people's power. And for me, there is no such thing as a woman who can't. That's the whole point of this work. There is no woman who can't because every, we have the most possibilities and opportunities that we ever had on the planet. Like every imaginable skill that you want to learn is literally on the internet and you can access it for free or you can hire coaches and mentors and do programs and hyperspeed your results. But everything is online. There's no more excuses as to why we can't. Women have more opportunities and possibilities than ever before. And we have the money, sex, power, sacral, like, we command magic money. Men are still hustling and working hard and we literally get to work a few hours and make so much money. Magic money, feminine power. Like we get to be, do have anything. But it starts with like, I respect this woman in me. I respect the best for myself and I respect my goals and my dreams. You know, people will ask me like, do you believe anybody can do this? Yes, I do. But the difference is not everybody will. And I'm speaking to people's power and whether this is something that's aligned for you or not stay in my free stuff do the work everything is like literally online anyways you're a proof of the beauty of your oh, thank you so much you know it's like you know I talked about like at the beginning you know like it's not what you say it's not what it looks like it's who you are when you're a powerful woman and you understand all the codes and I'm going to teach you things like it's going to be incredible. We're going to heal things too. We're going to do like the triggering work, the motherhood wound, all that stuff and goddess code, but it's also fun. And that's why you'll also get the art of feminine magnetism and it factor. Like there's fun in this, like women, we do love to have fun, but we also get to be so powerful and get to do anything that we ever wanted. But I don't want to speak to your insecurities. I want to speak to your power. If you feel called, let's go, let's move, let's do this. I got your back. You know, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm speaking to your power. Let's make moves. You go first. You're the catalyst for this whole mission. And I'm telling you, if you're an entrepreneur, like it factor and like goddess code, like it's what makes you so magnetic because no marketing strategy is better than when you're turned on, when you're fully in your power. It's you, you're the catalyst. Real energetics trumps any strategy or what it looks like or what you're trying to say. When you're activated and you're on fire and you speak to people's power, you pull people. You make me people move through your energy, not the things you sell. And we got to claim that within ourselves. When we claim we are the one for this mess for this mission mission, <laughs> mission, people agree, but we go first. No validation, no permission. I decide I'm the one, I claim this, I go first and people will respond. There's a frequency to certainty versus I need a validation from everybody. And I need validation, like people posting and until people like me and comment, then I'll know that I'm doing the right thing. Like we don't need that. We get to claim it, decide I'm the one. And like a lot of this work we're gonna be doing Goddess Code 2 is like where we disallow ourselves from having all the things we want is like this fear of like, not only just disappointment, but also the fear of like, am I worthy enough of it? Like going to work on the value that you feel within yourself because our greatest work really is to believe in ourselves and to do the emotional intelligence work because fears will come. They'll be there and we're just going to walk with them. But magnetism power starts with who you are, not what you do. It's not what you do. It's who you are when you do. It's not what you say. It's who you are when you say it. There's a, there's a like passion, conviction. There's an energy. There's a power. This is why, like, you know, it's not about the strategies. It's how people experience you to be, how they read you. I, it's like, why is it online? One person does the exact same thing and it works. They do the program, they do a strategy, the branding, the copy, everything's the same. And for one person, they're succeeding like crazy. And for other person, they're struggling. Why is this happening? Because 
It's their energy. It's, it's their power. It's their certainty. It's their knowing of their worth and their value. It's not enough to say, hey, everybody just do this and you'll be a multimillionaire and you'll get the man, all the things. If it was just the doing strategy thing, we'd all self-actualize. Hello, God randomly woke me up. Yay, I'm so happy. Well, I'm just wrapping up, Faith. You're going to love this call. I'm going to put a YouTube link once I'm, I'm off here. You'll love this. Talk a lot about power and tracking power. So I'm so excited. So I'm going to bring stuff on Friday. If there's no questions, I'll probably always have a riff anyways, because I can just talk about this all day long. Like it fires me up. I can feel my sacral. So goddess code is four weeks you'll you'll hear the official date i'm going to be launched in graphic probably on thursday probably get a little something's coming tomorrow um and then um it's going to be starting with, it's going to be starting after it factor so it factor for we go first you can buy it factor on its own or when the we go first 111 dollars. i'll be launching that and that is like literally like i'll get into it. it's like the it what is it and you'll get all of that if you're part of Goddess Code. And if you're alumni of Goddess Code, please reach out. You always get alumni deal as well. And then if you want to do a whole year together, conversations like this, money work, magnetism, relationship, badass conversations, nailing, like all the things, inner circle. And it's like you're paying $3.99 for every program and everything that you get. Thank you for raising awareness and our feminine power. Yes. And there'll be a draw. So if you want to be under the draw, like I said, Five people win 50% off. So you can get goddess code for 444 or it factor for half, whatever it is that you decide to do. I have many, many programs on many, many things and I'm evolving and I'm this vortex of so much creativity. Like, oh, like my work is about to get exponentially better. And for those of you who learn from me, our work is about to get exponentially better because it's like, there's a power coming. There's so much coming then channeling like crazy. So I love you. Um, I will see you Friday. I'll put a Q&A thread if you want to ask questions. I'll bring a final riff. We'll do the draw. Um, you'll see me launch Goddess Code if you have any questions. There's obviously a link tree in my bio as well. I'll put the links in there. But share, um, tag people who you feel need to be in here. And you'll also get a chance to win a tuition prize. So that's really cool. Okay. I love you so much. I will see your gorgeous faces Friday. Thank you for being here. I love you guys so much. Do this work, raise the bar. Let's respect ourselves. Let's say no, let's hold this comfort. Go back and re-listen to this. Go back and listen to day one. I'll bring more stuff. Um, do the masterminds contain all the programs? Yes. Yeah, so when you're in a, if you're a private client of mine or you're in a mastermind, then you get access to anything that you want, which is really, really cool. And you get actually, if you're an inner, like if you're a, also one-on-one too, you'll get inner circle for a whole year as well. Masterminds, you'll get a bunch of programs and you'll get what I'm doing for the four months that we're in the mastermind as well. Excited to listen to replays. Yes. So I'm going to do that for you right now, Faith. So I love you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. And Monisha, I'm going to see you tomorrow. We're doing an HD purpose reading. I had another one, another person that just uh, signed up. I love these things. They're so cool. And uh, yes. Okay. I'm done talking. I love you. I will see you guys on Friday and we will do the draw then. Bye-bye.